Hello, and welcome to the Buy, Sell, Hold Spotlight presented by Sports Car Market Magazine. I'm Darren Robertsch. Before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to join in the conversation and share your thoughts by leaving us a comment below. Our guest today is Jake O'Gorman. He is a car specialist for RM Sotheby's. Welcome, Jake. Happy to be here, Darren. For those who may not know you, why don't you introduce yourself and give a little bit of background? Yeah. So my name is Jake O'Gorman. I'm a car specialist with RM Sotheby's. I've been working with them for about 10 years uh, in total in this role, about five years. Exciting place to be for sure. And there's a lot to cover. So let's get right to it. The yep. uh, Gene Ponder collection. Uh, give us some results on that. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic auction, you know, exceeded our expectations, uh, you know, being a single owner live auction in Eastern Texas, a little town, Marshall, Texas. Uh, I was there for, well, our whole team was there combined, I'd say about a month and a half between everything from cataloging to, uh, you know, producing the auction to even loadout for all the parts and pieces and cars. Uh, yeah, great sale. We, about 120 cars, motorcycles and boats and, you know, 1100 lots of memorabilia with many of them going two, three, four times over the estimate for the memorabilia. It was, uh, it was, it was a frenzy. <laughs> Yeah, it's an astonishing collection for sure. And there were some amazing cars, incredible memorabilia, very, very, very extensive. So give us the overall result. What did you guys haul in for that sale? So for that that particular one, um, I think we did about like 24, uh, or 20, it was 22, just over 22 hammer uh, day of, and then obviously the, the BP on top of that. Um, and obviously 100% sell through rate <laughs> for, for that auction being no reserve. Uh, top sales that we had were the 300 SL uh, Roadster of Mr. Ponders that had been on many tours and rallies over the years. I had a chance to drive it and it was just buttery smooth. I, I understand why people, you know, love those cars. <laughs> and that one did a uh, 1595 uh, all in. Yeah, market's great on those cars, and they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. My my personal preference is the Roadster over the uh, the Gullwing. I, that's that may be a conversation or argument for another episode, but <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. You know, I, I, the suspension is amazing. Those those cars are are, are fabulous. What else? Uh, what else broke the bank at that sale? So one of the other ones was uh, M uh, Mr. Ponder was a fan of recreation cars. So you know, if certain things were either unattainable, didn't exist, you know, hidden away in a museum, never would be bought in this lifetime, he would have them built or find like very high quality reproductions. So there was a type 57 SC Atlantic, uh, Bugatti and, uh, Swiss built actual, you know, Bugatti underpinnings, uh, aluminum body. And that one brought one, one, five, uh, you know, million, 155,000 <laughs> all in which, uh, like great result for, you know, getting the style and being able to experience that car without, you know, calling Ralph, Ralph Lauren up and, you know, asking for a ride <laughs> because where else are you going to find one? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's an amazing number for, for a recreation too. There was also a whole bunch of really, really cool Alfa Romeos that, uh, that he had in that collection as well. So you mentioned your, that uh, your team was on the ground there for almost a month and a half. Why don't you kind of re re recap that experience for us? Like, from the time that the phone rang and 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 representatives of the collection or or uh, were uh, were reaching out to you, mm. to the end of 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 that experience and and watching all of those things find new homes, I'm sure it had to be one of those sort of uh, uh, unique experiences that you don't have too often over the course of your career. Very much so. It was you know monumental in the you know the the scale of 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 work and effort that went into. Uh, to producing the sale. This is actually the second auction we've done for Mr. Ponder. He uh, sold everything kind of like he did this year, this time uh, back in 2007. And we handled that sale. There was less cars and memorabilia. Then uh, he definitely stepped up the uh, scale of his collection between 07 and now um, one, one thing he mentioned uh, to me is that he's bought over 13,000 items uh, uh, eBay purchases in the last five years, which is, you know, must be best friends with his, with his UPS driver. Uh, but yeah, the, so we, uh, from, 
So Mr. Pondo being a longtime client of RM, uh, you know, selling his collection once and buying cars, uh, it was kind of a natural fit that we were able to offer this collection for him. Uh, and he was there at the sale, you know, watching, watching things sell and, uh, and chatting with clients and us kind of throughout the whole process. But yeah, we, we spent about two weeks just photographing everything, you know, and, and lauding because you can't just sell, you know, one, you know, one small sign, you have to kind of put it together for it to make sense. And between, you know, two weeks just doing that and then another several weeks uh, putting everything together in uh, not one, but three catalogs uh, for the sale. And, you know, everything that we do for a normal auction is, you know, cataloging cars, research, title work, uh, auth authenticating what's, you know, what's reproduction, what's, uh, you know, from the era, doing all that work, then going there and setting it all up having the auction with preview, answering questions. And actually one of my colleagues, he stayed there from the auction close through our Hershey sale for another two, you know, week and a half just to make sure everything was cleaned out of the building. <laughs> God, it's a project of, of astonishing oh. magnitude for sure. So now that Mr. Ponder has 20 plus million dollars burning a hole in his pocket, do you think he's going to do this to you again or is he done? <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure the buildings won't sit empty for long. Yeah, I suspect, I suspect <laughs> not. Uh, so what was your personal favorite moment of, of the entire experience? Yeah. So, you know, I, I love these private single owner collections, especially when they can be there to participate, you know, in, in it, my kind of, my favorite moments at these sales are hearing stories about, you know, how he acquired certain things or, you know, why it's important to him. Uh, and, and also just talking with, with clients, uh, one of my favorite things to do is uh, is phone bid. So you have the client on the phone. You're telling them either they're they're tuned in online as well. They're telling you tell them where the bid is. Uh, there's someone in the room, you know, bidding against them, and you can really get some good, uh, you know, some good banter back and forth. You know, talking with them and and kind of you know, hey, you know, would you like to bid again? And you know, they might get upset if if uh, someone bids against them when they think they're going to win it in the last second. <laughs> so that's always, that's always a fun, it's always fun. Yeah. The live auction environment, there's nothing like it. Certainly let's move on to uh, Hershey. Uh, give us an overview of how that went and, uh, and run down some of your top sellers there. Definitely. So Hershey, uh, we did uh, 10, 10 and a half million uh, in sales and 94% sell through rate. So very, you know, strong sell through rate, strong sale. We had a like a lot of on-site bidders for that sale. Uh, that's that's a heavy, you know, in the room, on the ground. They're there for the the Hershey uh, swap meet, and they come to her auction. Top top cars at that sale were the V16 uh, Cadillac uh, Phaeton. Uh, it did 880 all in, and right up there, number two was the uh, 14 Thomas Flyer uh, uh, flyabout that did five, uh, 594 all in. So brass and pre-war still rule Hershey. <laughs> there was a lot of speculation coming into Hershey that, uh, the strength of the pre-war market may have been sort of, uh, of waning a little bit. I, I, I suspect that that probably wasn't the case. What was your impression on the ground as, as Hershey is such a barometer for the pre-war market? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So coming into Hershey this, you know, this year, you know, it, it, it is always, uh, you know, reaching out to people to get them to come to Hershey to bid on things, pay attention to cars and that. Uh, I found that the upper end of brass and pre-war, you know, V6, again, V16s, uh, you know, bigger, uh, bigger things like that, like higher end things, they still, you know, held and, and, and did well. I find, I found that uh, some smaller, uh, you know, maybe not concourse restored, but, you know, good driver quality sort of pre-war Fords and that were, uh, you know, were, were a bit soft uh, from years past. And, you know, that may be a function of the people that collect those cars and and use them and exhibit them through, you know, aging out of that particular market. 
Yeah, it, it's an interesting it's an interesting space in the marketplace right now. Uh, where do you think this this uh, market uh, with pre war in particular goes moving forward? It, it right around this time last year, it seemed like it got white hot, and then into mm -hmm. Scottsdale went crazy and continued throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Do you see that continuing, or, or which direction are pre war cars going? In your opinion? So you know, just like modern, you know, uh, you know, eighties, you know, young time with cars, modern supercars, all that. If if it's something. Well, with, with pre-war, if it's something you can use or do something with, like a tour, a rally, you can be part of a club, you know, whether it be the Duesenberg, uh, you know, the Duesenberg tour, uh, different CCCA rallies, different, uh, you know, horses, carriage, brass and gas tours. If there's things you can do with the cars, they they you know for sure have a you know an extra layer of value to them. Uh, you know, certain things that maybe there's not a great club support or you know you don't have uh you know you there's not as many events you can do with them they may be a, a a bit softer but definitely things you can you can be a part of a community uh you can use it on tours go on rallies and and have you know have fun with it uh that's those things are still still strong so focus on the standards and, and, and move forward from there. Um, 2022 for Arm Sotheby's has really been about the private and sealed bid auctions. And you guys just uh, are in the process of completing a couple of those right now. Why don't you talk about those two cars? Yeah. So by, again, uh, I had the opportunity to drive a 300SL to Hershey on a, a tour that we did. And I, I understand it now <laughs> why people love them. So we have a, you know, three, you know, 300,000 mile plus uh, uh, 300 SR Roadster that's coming from single family ownership. And, you know, this car sort of, it, it made the, the Cushway family, made the, the son who's selling it a 300 SL specialist. Uh, you know, he started fixing other people's 300 SLs because he had one and now in that he's, a, he's the specialist now uh, in the UK for it. And that car... Uh, it sounds funny that we're, you know, we're advertising the highest mileage through an SL Roadster to come to market and, you know, you know, buy it privately in a, in a, in a special way on this uh, sealed bid auction. But it's had, you know, you know, fastidious upkeep. It's obviously been rebuilt several times uh, and there's all these little tricks they've done to it for increased, you know, driving enjoyment and uh, a little bit of safety too. It uh, even, it has ABS that they installed in it, uh, you know, later in its life, which is, you know, crazy. So, so it's, it's a, it's, it's a great car. And from talking to my colleagues that have driven it and rode in it, like it is on the button, ready to go. Uh, you guys also have a very, a very rare, very exotic uh, uh, Radwood sort of era ferrari that you're uh you're doing a sealed bid auction on as well why don't you talk about that yes yeah one of five ferrari 288 gto actually built under the watchful eye of enzo ferrari himself uh 650 horsepower uh only 940 kilograms curb weight and nearly 230 mile per hour top speed uh you know an absolute animal i am a huge fan of 288 gtos in kind of the rawness uh, compared to later, some of the later Ferrari, uh, you know, analog supercars. And this thing, it, you know, it's a beast. And again, where else are you going to find one for sale? And this one, you can bid literally from anywhere. <laughs> it's it's a wild, wild car. And, I, and I'll tell you, the bodywork on it makes it look like a tiger going down the road, too. I mean, it, you know, if you're not familiar with this particular vehicle, uh, hop on uh, armsotheby's.com and take a look. It is it is extreme, to say the least. And it is, I don't know, potentially the most 80s car I've ever seen in my entire life. So uh, it's checks worth checking out and it will be a feature in somebody's collection somewhere for sure. It checks up on a boxes. Uh, coming up on the uh, 29th of October, you've got another big sale. This one, the Newman Haas Racing Sale. It's got a ton of of IndyCar and, and F1 and memorabilia galore. Very cool sale. Give us the rundown there. Yeah, so Newman Haas sale. Obviously, we're 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 calling it the house the house that Newman Haas built uh, in our advertising, and uh, it'll be yeah twentieth of October, Lincolnshire, Illinois. Forty two cars, eight of which contributed to the championship winning seasons of the Newman Haas team. And 
you know, this is an opportunity to add one of these, you know, significant open wheel cars to your garage, uh, all being offered without reserve from, you know, kind of a, an American you know, dynasty of, uh, of, of open wheel racing. Yeah, it's an incredible group, incredible group of cars, uh, mm. amazing history. I mean, there's even a, a timepiece uh, for sale there as well. I mean, there's a yeah. little bit of everything. And if you're a memorabilia racing fan collector, any kind of open wheel uh, enthusiast at all, mm. this is the place to be. So how, how did you guys even get in contact with this? Did the phone just ring and somebody from, from the, the organization called? Or was this something that you guys actively were seeking out? Or mm. Tell us the story of how something like this comes to RM Sotheby's. So something with with a lot of these private collections, it's a lot of it's based on you know relationships and and reputation. Uh, for this particular sale, I I know there was other people looking at uh, you know looking at producing this auction and and doing something with these cars, but it it worked out this year that we were positioned correctly and we have the resources and you know, the, the track record of what we've done this year and obviously, you know, in years past to produce it and, and do a, you know, really thorough and thoughtful job of, you know, not just marketing it and selling it, but also cataloging it appropriately, describing everything and, and getting people interested uh, to come out and, you know, bid and buy uh, in person. Yeah, it's it's an amazing collection for sure. And again, if you're an open wheel racing fan, there's going to be something there for you for sure. Um, moving across the pond, November 5th, you guys are returning to London uh, and starting out with the London to Brighton Veteran Car Run. Want it, for people that may not know what that is, why don't you kind of explain what that is? It It is my bucket list event. Uh, <laughs> so uh, looking to hopefully do it next year. And London to Brighton is, you know, 1904 and earlier cars, horses, carriages, one, two cylinder steam cars that have to run from London to Brighton. And, you know, it's 65 miles or so, but it takes all day <laughs> to get there, you know, without breakdowns and, you know, uh, traffic and, and everything. It's, it is a, it's a wonderful, wonderful event. I think one of the oldest running car events uh, in the world. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong here, but then at the end of that, there's a big hill you have to go up, right? <laughs> yeah, and and that's like the ultimate test. Like, a, a, you know, a sl an incline is the ultimate test for some of these pre-1904 cars. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, people don't think about it. Like, you know, you think you think old cars, you think, you know, uh, Model A, Model T, things of that nature. But we're talking 1904. I oh. mean, it's 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 a 60 mile jaunt on even the best of roads is uh, a major challenge for something like that. And to throw the uh, the uh, uh, the element of an incline in at the end, it's uh, imagining I'm imagining it's quite quite an experience. <laughs> and it's in November in, you know, in not not particularly the most sunny and warm country in the world. Uh, so you're in these open things all bundled up and usually period clothing. Uh, and R.M. Sotheby's is the you know, title sponsor again this year. And we actually have entered our own uh, 1904 Cadillac that we've run in it many times. So it finished last year. So we'll see how it does this year. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed for you for sure. It's uh, it's a crapshoot at best, definitely. <laughs> so give us kind of the overview of the London sale. How many years have you guys been there? Um, what, what's been your impression in the past? Um, what's, what's the deal with London? Yeah, so it's our 16th, 16th year uh, hosting the London sale. And this year we've actually moved to, uh, it's, it's later, it's November to coincide with the London to Brighton run. And we're having it this year at Marlborough House. So new venue for us. And it should be, you know, exciting to present the cars in that, uh, you know, in that space. And there's a lot of special things <laughs> in London this year. I, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be mega. <laughs> Yeah, you've got some amazing cars. It's it's not only going to be a, a great all around event, but uh, once you get inside the uh, the the room there, it's going to be incredible as well. Let's start from the top: the Gran Turismo collection, <laughs> examples of Ferraris, big five, one of each. You've got two big Bugatti EV one tens, both the GTN and SS. And most interestingly, I think are the Group B offerings that you have in that collection. There's some really cool stuff there. Oh yeah, it's um like <laughs> it's uh, unreal. Like the the scope of that collection 
And, you know, any one of those cars would be, you know, the, the centerpiece of a mega card collection, but have everything together, you know, at once it's unreal, absolutely unreal. Yeah. And I think group B is starting to develop sort of a lore with people that maybe it, it hasn't completely had in the past where people were understanding really how insane that, that racing series really was. And uh, there's a lot of examples that are that are in this collection for sure that uh, would be centerpieces for anybody who's a racing or group B fanatic. Oh yeah, from like the like the Lanchas to the you know, Audi Quattros, uh, like just absolute monsters, huge horsepower, big big turbo leg <laughs> engines, like just rocket ships, and and you know I think too for the obviously the, the age group now the you know these the group b stuff now is what some of our parents the 50s kind of racing was to them and in, in terms of you know it's it, it has this this legendary status that's sort of building every year and uh they're seen as very important things uh and are and that's reflected in their values yeah there'll never be another racing series like that again i mean it, these were astonishingly crazy cars that were it's incredibly dangerous mm -hmm. <laughs> we all kind of know the results and why it lasted as long as it did and then <laughs> I, you know again i think i think it's achieving legendary status with a younger audience who's able to actually watch these races as they're being posted online and mm -hmm. realizing what total insanity that that series was it, it's it's completely removed from uh you know it's a complete opposite from you know driver assisted traction you know, hi hybrid, everything that's, you know, in modern supercars, it's the complete opposite, like very analog, very dangerous. Uh, just, you know, I, I, you know, I know some of them, they could, they, they only run one race and they have to be rebuilt the engines because they were just, you know, on the edge of, you know, of, of blowing up when they would be pushed, they'd be pushing them so hard. Yeah, those guys were gladiators for sure. Speaking of gladiators, another collection that's uh, inc equally important and I think mm -hmm. probably will be an incredible investment for somebody moving forward is you've got a, uh, a, a set of JDM offerings where you've got one of each of the big four represented. You've got a 2002 Mazda RX-7, mm -hmm. uh, a Sprint R Type A. You've got a 2002 Nissan Skyline GTR V-Spec Type 2 uh, NUR. You've got a 2001 Honda NSXT and a 2002 Turbo uh, RZS uh, example. I mean, that's the big four. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are, you know, your Hemi Kudas, your Ferraris of previous generations, et cetera. I mean, these are the cars that, that people played in video games of a certain age that are aspirational vehicles. And you can buy one of each example at the London sale. And, you know, it's a, you know, it, it's, it is a turnkey JDM collection, <laughs> you know, if, if someone wanted to be, wanted to do that, but now hundred percent, I mean, these are the cars that, uh, you know, were the, essentially the poster cars for a generation, right? They were the, the hot things that now that group who's, who's found success and you know, has money now it's, you know, they're coveted as 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 super special important things especially if they're pure unmodified i know you know uh even uh when i was younger i remember some of these not not uh to the specification but certain jdm cars that were got you know a little chopped up and modified as as you did uh and yeah it's it's it's, it's an ultimate ultimate grouping of of jdm jdm cars yeah, and what an investment too. I don't even think that these cars have really started to even take off yet. I mean, it, with gray laws aside and everything else in the U.S. market and so on and so forth, I mean, these are the cars that you want to buy right now and sit someplace and wait because, again, <laughs> you know, these are the movie cars, these are the video game cars, these are the poster cars. They're aspirational vehicles for for a generation for sure. So <laughs> if you're ready, uh, if you want to get ahead of the curve, uh, these are these are the cars to buy right now. So Jake, you're a guy who is out in the marketplace all the time, doing all the car stuff with all the car people and have a very sound knowledge of, of the current market. So, so why don't you give us one car to buy, one car to sell, and one car to hold? Certainly. So I would say to buy, I would do 575 Ferrari, uh, you know, uh, naturally, naturally aspirated, analog, you know, supercar, front-engined, V12, you know, that isn't, that formula doesn't uh, you know seems to you know it won't be repeated so 
having that and buying that now, I, I can see that as a as a good thing to to buy before uh, before you can't find one. <laughs> and uh, what are we selling? I you know right now I would say selling. It seems that Lamborghini Countach's have are having a a really good moment right now. Uh, you know, going up two three hundred grand plus in the last couple of years. So that's something I would definitely consider if you have a low mileage one, you know, in good colors, that's something I would definitely uh, put on the market. <laughs> and what would you hold? As far as holding right now, I would say, you know, obviously hold what you like and what you enjoy using and driving and, you know, being, uh, you know, in the cars, you know, auction business, obviously we, we work on transactions, but uh, it seems that, you know, certain, uh, you know, pre-war Fords right now are a bit soft and, you know, if you can hold it and drive it and enjoy it, you know, do that. Uh, and I would say same with uh, big, uh, you know, big Heelys. There's a lot of them uh, sort of coming out now because that generation's getting out of owning those cars. So that's something I would probably hold at the, at the moment. Again, great driving, lovely car. Uh, so if you like it, hold on to it and, and enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, those are wonderful cars indeed. Same thing with the 575s. I mean, it is the pinnacle of that front engine uh, manual transmission uh, 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 rear wheel drive configuration. And it, it won't likely ever get better than that for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, any final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts. I mean, what I've seen this year, obviously we've had a fantastic year at RM Sotheby's. And what I've uh, heard from a lot of clients is they want cars they can use. They want to use their cars. They want to take them on car rallies and tours and you know go to shows and really uh you know get out there and enjoy them uh so i have seen a lot of uh a lot of you know familiar faces cars that have gone through auction and then they're being exhibited at shows or i've you know met them again on rallies uh we just did a little rally and three of the cars on it uh were ones that were bought at rm auction you know rm sotheby's auctions over the last two years. So it's great to see people using them. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of collector cars. It's a, it's a sound investment on top of the fact that it's something that's tangible that you can you can actually use and enjoy and and, mm -hmm. and have experiences with. Um, mm -hmm. Where can people go to learn more? So you can go to rmsotheby's.com to view our website. There's buttons there for consign a vehicle, uh, request more info on lots we have. There's links to all of our you know, very well produced videos that are hosted on uh, YouTube and also embedded in the web page as well. And uh, you can also uh, contact a specialist if you want to talk cars or get set up for our, you know, some of our, you know, upcoming uh, auctions. Yeah, it's a busy time for Arm Sotheby's. You guys are everywhere and you guys are doing lots and lots of stuff. I would like to thank our guest today, Jake O'Gorman, for joining us. To learn more about anything that we discussed here, be sure to pick up the latest issue of Sports Car Market Magazine by visiting the link in the video description down below. As a reminder, if you enjoyed this content, please take a moment to like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay on top of future episodes. I'm Darren Roberge. Thank you for joining us on the Buy, Sell, Hold Spotlight.